Dear colleagues, I will give you a 10 minutes guide to the what, who, when, where and why for anesthesiologists worldwide on the principles of palliative care in oncology. I have no disclosures. What is palliative care? Palliative care is an approach that improves the quality of life of patients and their families through the prevention and relief of suffering by means of early identification and impeccable assessment and treatment of pain and other problems like physical, psychosocial and spiritual. It uses a team approach and can be applied early in the course of the illness in conjunction with other therapies that are intended to prolong life. Too often curative care has too much attention and power and budget. Palliative care comes at the end of life. But palliative care is more than terminal care. We focus on pain and symptom management and optimization of the disease trajectory of a patient, giving him still quality of life. This was also stated by Dame Cecily Saunders, the founder of St. Christopher Hospice in London. You matter because you are and you matter to the end of your life. We do all we can, not only to help you die peacefully, but also to live until you die. Quality of life is important because medical progress retunes a lot of diseases from terminal to chronic diseases. However, improving the quality of life of this prolongation of life seems to be much more difficult. So who is skilled for palliative care? Optimally, we hope that every medical field will define a set of basic palliative skills for which they will be primarily responsible, as was stated by Timothy Kill in the New England Journal of Medicine. So this is a question for all of you during this World Congress. What are your skills additive to the oncologist? Anesthesiologists are known for their flexibility and working in all fields like anesthesiology, local region anesthesia, the ICU, the emergency department, the helicopter, at foreign areas, in pain centers, and nowadays more and more in palliative care. So we are a wonderful medical specialty looking to the homeostasis of medical life in the 60s for anesthesiology, in the 70s for the ICUs, in the 80s for acute and chronic pain, in the 90s for symptom control in advanced diseases, in the 2000s for palliative care, 2010 for supportive care and difficult ethical decision making, and nowadays 2020 for leadership in pandemic situations. A real around person. Anesthesi anesthesiology should focus more on palliative medicine and palliative care as the fifth pillar of anesthesiology, as was stated by Professor Wieser from Germany. And he made a whole curriculum, which is very additional to the knowledge of all the other fields of anesthesiology. The role of an anesthesiologist in pain and palliative medicine is very specific. He has special knowledge and expertise in complex situations and cases. He's aware of consequences of multimorbidity. He is in, always in search of practical and technical solutions. He is moving on the frontiers of critical ethical discussions versus clinical possibilities and opportunities. And he should move from one theater towards patient trajectories. He should be integral part of clinical decision makings in perioperative patients and at all areas where his skills are needed. We have wonderful giants in the past and in the present, who really did a nice job in palliative care, and we should follow these examples. When should palliative care be started? We all know the disease trajectory of an oncological space patient. He can be in remission, in relapse, or he can be cured and go to survivorship. If you look to the example of pain, then we can have treatment-related pain, unrelated pain, metastatic disease, pain, end-of-life pain, or pain in chronic survivors. And looking to the double WHO letter, which was published, is too simple for all these different kinds of pains. So we should move forward towards the oncology and towards the diagnosis of a patient in cancer and use screening tools and evaluation methods, self-empowerment programs for patients and telemedicine 
to improve our care and symptom control for these patients. Why is that important? It was a wonderful paper, again in the New England Journal of Medicine, of the group of Vicky Jackson from MassGen Hospital in Boston. And they showed that in the most deadly tumor, adding a palliative care program early on in the disease of an oncological pathway improves the quality of life, decreases depression, but more important, has even a life prolonging effect, as you can see here on the Kaplan Meyer curve at the right. So, this was a dramatic important observation. And that is an important issue also for anesthesiologists to focus more on pain and support of a palliative care. And Diane Meyer from New York stated that there should be a simultaneously delivery of adjunct to disease focused treatment. So a real integrated program for cancer patients. This was also supported by Professor Stein Casa, past president of the AAPC published in the Lancet Oncology, because palliative care is not perceived as a needed integral part of cancer care continuum. There is a deficient planning of palliative care at national and regional levels. There is insufficient organizational and infrastructural capacity of palliative care. And palliative care is too much limited to terminal care. Therefore, we should move forward to care pathways, to quality controls, to a better investment in infrastructure and workforce and go to the outpatient department and the home situation of patients. We should more use more health technology techniques. Why this was demonstrated by a publication by Florian Strasser and Nathan Cherney, demonstrating that in special desiated centers, ESMO desiated centers, the best outcome for palliative care was present because of the focus. And this outcome was even better when an integrated pain center run by anesthesiologists was present. My research focuses also on inappropriate end of life care at the end of life in populations where there is yes or no palliative care. And the better the palliative care team works, the less the indicators are high, less emergency room visits, less hospital admissions, less chemotherapy, less hospital deaths, highly significant outcome. Pain is a very prevalent symptom in, onco in oncology. It's often the first reason for consultation. So we should use that position as an anesthesiologist to anchor more with the oncological pathway and to give better symptom control for all these patients. Why is that important? Because an oncologist is not asking for pain. That's the work and the specific skill of an anesthesiologist and a pain doctor. They will ask for pain and go for better treatment. As was stated also by Kenneth Candido, we have a lot of practical skills by interventional procedures that can solve complex pain. And this technique should be added to the WHO ladder and should be part of a more complex oncological strategy involving the whole body system. We should add our knowledge there. Therefore, I can bring your home take home messages and conclusions. Palliative care should be the fifth pillar of anesthesiology. Patients don't report spontaneously about their pain and symptoms. Medical specialists don't explore the disease trajectory of a patient enough. A multi and interdisciplinary approach should be offered, including anesthesiologists' pathway. Early involvement of anesthesiologists can prevent useless interventions. An early initiation of palliative care focus program in anesthesiology will improve the outcome of our patients. So move forward towards the oncologist. Thanks for your attention. I'm always available for your questions.